everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you could join me again today for another video. The subject of the video today is all about the cost of transition, the financial implications of doing the whole thing. So basically, how much does it cost to go from this to this? <music> Before I jump into the video, the first thing I want to tell you about is a Patreon account that I have set up for my YouTube account. And basically what I'm trying to do is um, give you guys access to my videos or share ideas with you before I actually make the videos reality via YouTube and make them public. So I'm going to be telling you all about the ideas that I've got. I'll be interested to get some feedback from you and I'll also let you know when they're going to be aired and what my schedule is for filming and for posting. Um, I'm trying to raise some money to get some better filming equipment. I've got a ring light and I've got a tripod but what I don't have is a really good camera. At the moment this video is being shot on my iPhone 5 SE and not only is my iPhone 5 really old but that is what I'm using solely to do my videos with at the moment. I do have um, a little digital camera but the videos on that are rubbish and they're absolutely no good at all so what I would like is some decent kit and a proper mic and that way I can give you better quality videos. Anything you can do would be much appreciated. I'm not used to doing stuff like this. I'm not used to doing Patreon and things like that. But the link is in my bio and it will also be down in the description below. So thank you very much. Thank you. First thing I'll say is I didn't go through the NHS for my treatment. So obviously um, in, in the UK specifically, I know that I've got a lot of people watching from the States, so I know that you, a lot of you can get your surgery through on insurance and stuff like that. Um, in the UK, you can have um, hormone replacement therapy on the NHS, you can have counselling, you can have psychological assessment, and you can go to um, uh, special uh, gender centres uh, in London and across the country in different venues, and it's all paid for by the NHS. I know there is usually a waiting list, and when I started my transition, I knew the waiting list was about uh, 18 months to two years, and at 36, I just thought I can't wait that long so actually what I did was I paid for my first consultation on my credit card I just wanted to get the ball, ball rolling so I saw a specialist in London who is no longer practicing so I'm not going to tell you what his name was or anything like that but my first consultation was £230 I also then needed to pay £125 there on after every three to six months when I saw the consultant. So this cost me money and I've worked out that all my consultations roughly over about a five year period was something like 800 to a thousand pounds. So I'll round it up and say it was about a thousand pounds altogether. One of the procedures I started really early on is something that does cost a lot of money and something that isn't available in the UK under the NHS, um, which is hair removal. I didn't actually have electrolysis in the end. Um, I had all of my facial hair removal done via laser. Um, and if you've seen my before pictures, I might put one sort of in this region here. Um, I had quite... Oh, a lot of shadow and quite a lot of beard and I absolutely hated it so I started my laser hair removal before I started HRT. After I had like my first consultation with this gender specialist I started hair removal then and just got the ball rolling and that was £100 a time and I was in the room having the actual procedure done it took about 15 minutes so it was £100 for 15 minutes worth of work. I had to have the laser hair removal um, every four to six weeks and I just had it ongoing throughout the majority of my transition. I finally stopped having laser hair removal about two years ago, but before that I was having it roughly every four to six weeks, maybe six weeks, 
um, in six weeks phases towards the end um, when it was not growing back so fast. But I've worked it out that over that entire period, um, I had about 25 sessions. So it works out roughly, I've got my figures in front of me here, if I've done my maths correctly, uh, about 2,500 pounds, again, over about a six year period, which is a huge amount of money to spend. But I, I'm glad that I did because it's, it's all gone. <laughs> Another thing that you're gonna to have to budget for, of course, is HRT, your hormones. So in the UK, I one thing I have been getting on the NHS since I started my treatment was my HRT, which was all of my hormones. And what I actually have been doing is buying a yearly prepayment prescription card, which is currently, I think it stands at about 104 pounds per, per year instead of paying the prescription charge of £9 each time that I go. So I get my prescription on average, I don't know, every sort of three to four weeks. So it works out to be better value if I get a prepayment prescription card. So if you haven't done that already, I would strongly recommend that you did do that to save yourself a little bit of money. One of the other things that you need to consider spending money on is clothing and it takes a while for you to kind of suss out um, what suits you, what doesn't suit you, and you have to make allowances for how hormones affect your body and how your body shape, shape will change and breast growth and all of those kind of things. And so your wardrobe will con change continuously over your transition as well. So I would recommend at the beginning that you don't spend lots and lots of money on lots of new clothes. I was going to charity shops, um, good old Primark, I still love Primark, but I was going in places like that and, and just getting much cheaper clothes. It didn't matter if I um, grew out of them or if I didn't like them after a while. It was kind of a great way to experiment and see what fits and what didn't fit. So I've put here that I reckon I've spent over the past eight years uh, probably about £2,000 on a new wardrobe. I don't have half of the stuff that I started off with uh, at the very beginning of my transition. A lot of it was from charity shops and then I gave it back to charity shops again at the end. But um, I have in latter years treated myself to some better clothes, but basically I had a wardrobe of boys clothes. I wasn't cross-dressing before my transition. I just didn't do that. I didn't feel the need to do it. Um, you might be doing that now anyway, but I didn't, so I had to start from scratch. So I reckon that I have spent about £2,000 on clothes. The next things I'm going to talk about are more surgery related. Um, I've had two rounds of facial feminization. The first round of facial feminization was the most expensive. I can't remember how much each procedure cost, but I can give you a little bit of breakdown about what I had done and how much the total was. So I had um, hairline advance, I had brows, um, brows taken away, and I had the um, arches, I thought it was like the arches of my eye sockets opened up slightly. I had an upper lip lift, myoplasty, I had um, geez, small cheek implants, and I had a chin look together. That came to about 14,000 pounds which is a lot of money. And the way that I funded that at the time was my then my ex-partner, um, he brought, brought me out of the house that we owned together and, um, and I used the money that I got from my half of the equity to pay for it basically. So I sacrificed owning a house and having some money to invest somewhere else. I invested it into myself, into my face. <laughs> And so it just enabled me to start living my true life, if you like. So uh, it's a lot of money to spend. That was all that I had at that time, and uh, it was money well spent. So going in order, the next surgery I had was um, breast augmentation surgery. And I had that done in the UK, in a Harley Street hospital, by a private um, cosmetic surgery group. Um, 
it was quite expensive. <laughs> At the time I was working in London, so I was earning a bit more money than I would have done where I was working before, which was down in this, on the South Coast. So I was earning more money working in London. I'd saved a bit of money and I thought, you know what? I think it's time I got my boobs done. I made some friends in London and they recommended a really good surgeon. They had all had their boobs done by the same surgeon. And um, so I thought, why not? I, I always kind of planned to do it. I didn't get a great deal from HRT. After about three to four years, I was at a small B if, at best and I really didn't think it was gonna get any better than that. So I had um, breast enlargement surgery done in London, which pushed, pushed me up to about a D cup, which is a really comfortable size considering the size of my rib cage and upper body and everything. A D cup is a really nice, natural looking size but anyway i'm digressing um i've worked it out that my boobs cost about six thousand pounds for a full set after i had my boobs done literally a month later um i found out that i had some more money coming to me from the sale of the house my ex-partner actually sold the house because he had had it so he sold it and, and I was owed a little bit more money so I used that money uh, to have a second round of facial feminization of which I went to Belgium um, and had it done by a different surgeon and this time I had um, a mid face lift I had a chin reduction I had my chin recontoured basically so it was two procedures a little bit of fat graft went into sort of this area here, here as well um, which is quite alarming because I can't remember knowing that that was going to happen but it did <laughs> um, so I had those two main surgeries I made and that um, came to a grand total of £9,000 so we can really see that the totals are beginning to add up a little bit now the last surgery that I had done was my SRS surgery and I had that done in 2015. If you want to find out more about it, look at my previous video, I'll put a link to it below. And um, that was done in Thailand, it was done with the amazing Dr. Sue Porn and his lovely, lovely ladies at the clinic. Um, and I was really fortunate because I couldn't afford to have that done. I, I, what well, I chose to go to Dr. Sue Porn because I had a friend who went there, and I just thought she had a really amazing result. And I think I've said in a previous video, this is the only thing you do once, and I just wanted to get it done right. I'd seen, uh, had consultations with surgeons in the UK. Um, but I didn't want hours and hours of um, genital electrolysis. I just couldn't bear the thought of that. I started to get it done. It was so painful. I just thought, not doing this. So I opted to go to Dr. Suporn in Thailand where he, he doesn't need you to have that done. So um, I decided to go there instead. Um, and I was lucky enough um, that my lovely mum and dad were able to fund that for me. And the cost of going to Thailand, having the surgery done, including travel and the hotel, I think comes up to about, I think it was about 14,000 pounds altogether, all in accommodation and flights and the surgery. So with all of those payments taken into consideration, I've come up with a rough estimate that I have spent in about the range of 48 and 50 thousand pounds over the past eight years on all things that have enabled me to transition which sounds like a huge amount of money but it doesn't necessarily mean that is what you have to pay to be able to transition lots of people transition with far less money than that so i would say hair removal is is one of the main things definitely um I think having breasts, <laughs> having my um, breast augmentation really helped with my confidence and gender identity and reduced a lot of the dysphoria because it made my body look a lot more feminine. If you can afford to get your breasts done, I definitely would recommend it. Um, I had my facial feminization done 
before I had my SRS done. In fact, I had it done, my first facial feminization I had done three years before I had my SRS. So SRS was actually quite a long way down on the list, so much so that if my mum and dad hadn't stepped in, I wouldn't have been able to afford it to have that done anyway. So um, it's up to you what's most important. Socially for me, just to get on in life, for me facial feminization was more important. I've got a job to do, it's a responsible job, and I just didn't want the hassle of people questioning my gender face to face so that was one of the most important things for me it's entirely up to you so anyway thank you so much for watching like I said before I'm recording this thing on an iPhone and I really could do with some decent recording equipment as you can see I've just told you that I spent all my money <laughs> so um, yeah, I really need a, a little bit of help and I would like to share ideas and things with you before they go out onto YouTube. So yes, I've got a Patreon account, it's linked down below. The other thing I will say as well is that um, I'd really love it if you gave the video a like or any comments you have as well below, type them down below, love to hear from you. And also if you tap the little watermark about there, um, it will take you to a subscribe button, click the subscribe lovely for you to join me on every video that I do. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I will see you next time.